Well, let's, uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 10. I'd like to just start there and read. Thank you. What am I going to put it? <laughs> what? Okay. Um, and I thought that this was kind of a transition from chapter 10 to chapter 11. 11 is where we are tonight, right? Okay. Reading with me on 42. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. While Peter was still speaking, these words the Holy Spirit fell on upon all those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Now from chapter 11. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them? But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, And it came to me, when I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must now call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. And then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Praise God. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad 
and encourage them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas city. And, uh, but the hand of the Lord was there. Amen? You know, a ministry can't turn people around unless the hand of the Lord is with them. You can turn people to a personality without the hand of the Lord. You can turn people to a social club without the hand of the Lord. You can turn people to a church or institution without the hand of the Lord. But you can't turn people to the Lord without the hand of the Lord. Amen? Saturday last, I had uh, a couple of people coming to the house. And there were two black brethren and a white lady. And they were from St. Peter's. Anybody familiar with St. Peter's? Catholic? That's a big church in Winston-Salem. Well, in our conversation, it became pretty obvious that there was a connection between us. And um, as they were about to leave, one of the gentlemen said, uh, oh, by the way, what's your name? And of course, for me, that's like an open door. Uh, they call me Noah. And I had an opportunity to, as I did tonight with one of the brethren, to show them signs of, or pictures of the uh, initial ark that I built 30 years ago that the kids could actually get on, that had a ramp that came down, and a uh, ship's ladder just inside the door. And it was, uh, it was amazing, really. But, you know, as I shared that with them, and I shared how much it meant to me, and what an opportunity it was to minister to little people, um, it, just, uh, it just amazed me, their response, you know, and. Uh, it was obvious. They said, you know, we came by to b encourage you, to bless you, and we got blessed. Kind of like Brother said, Brother Joel, you know, the opportunity is there. It's there for each and every one of us to reach out and to encourage and to build up and to share the God of the universe, he's there with us. He, uh, he's there for everyone who will reach out and accept him. And, and you know, it's, it's just amazing the opportunities in life that get, get by us, that we miss out on. And it, it just, I would encourage all of us to be ready always to give an answer, right? With the hope that's in you, with meekness and fear. God is so good. And it's wonderful to be in a group like this with gentlemen who love Jesus, who love one another, who encourage one another, 